All right, so today we're talking about how the pistons inside of a diesel engine help the diesel engine to fire as opposed to the pistons inside of a gasoline engine. Unlike a gasoline engine, the pistons inside of a diesel engine have a bowl where the fuel is sprayed into the, the fuel from the fuel injector is sprayed into the bowl and ignited without the use of a spark plug or an any sort of igniting device. The majority of the combustion process occurs inside of the bowl of the piston. As you can see here, you can see the fuel spray marks from the injectors on the top of the bowl of the pistons. I have this one outlined with a pencil to help you see it better. This particular engine or this particular piston's out of a Cummins, and it apparently had five hole injectors in it. You can count the individual injector marks. Now, if you have a diesel engine apart and you want to see if your injectors are working properly, say you had a piston that failed, you can see each individual mark of the injectors typically on the piston and if you see one that's out of normal that can help you identify a cause of a piston failure. Uh, diesel engines typically have more typically have two compression rings similar to that of the gas but they can have more as in this piston which has three compression rings and two oil rings. This is due to the high combustion pressures inside of a diesel engine as compared to a gas. The, the diesel engines run off compression, so their, combustion, their, compre, their compression ratios are typically somewhere around 17 to one. They can go all the way up to 25 to one or so. And well, so the higher compression ratio typically needs a little bit more compression rings. Each one of these pistons has a different bowl design in it, specific for that engine and that injector. This particular piston has a really deep bowl in it, and it swells out, swells back out to the edge of the piston. So the injectors on this engine spray right, the injectors spray in here and they don't have a very big pattern. Whereas this bowl is a fairly large bowl so it uses most of the combustion, most of the top of the piston has a combustion chamber and it gets a fairly wide spray pattern on the injectors. Here's a close-up diagram of the different injector types. As you can see, they have different, for different ways of atomizing the fuel in the chamber. Unlike a gas engine, which is a homogeneous mixture, diesel en engines are heterogeneous, which is, or how, Also, I have here a cutout of, this is just for reference. Some people don't know what an IDI diesel is. They typically have a flat top piston with a tiny bowl about the size of your finger for the bowl, and it typically lines up with this pre-combustion chamber. The fuel is actually sprayed in this chamber and ignited, and then is f flamed out through here into the bowl of the piston, and then that's your this substitutes for the bowl of the piston in an IDI diesel. There's also a couple different types of pistons in diesel engines. I got two of the three types here. I do not have a third type, which is a solid steel type. This one's an aluminum 
aluminum piston. As you can see, the wrist pins in a diesel are also quite a bit bigger than that of a gas, typically. And the piston is typically a lot thicker and a lot heavier duty. For instance, the ring land. The second type I got here is a steel piston with an aluminum skirt. This is typically used in heavier duty industrial applications where the engine has to take a lot of wear and is typically ran to maximum horsepower all the time. Now in, in gasoline engines, your piston wall clearances are typically around two thousandths between you have two thousandths of an inch in between the piston and the cylinder wall that's actually a spec from a LSX engine and a comparable spec to a Cummins 5.9 liter engine is actually six thousandths so a gas or so a diesel engine would have about six thousandths clearance in between a piston and the cylinder wall this is due to the high combustion pressures and high heat the pistons in a diesel typically expand more that's why it's very important to let diesel engines warm up and cool down. Otherwise, you're, you can do damage to the pistons, which I will discuss in part two of the video. Failure of pistons can be caused by a few different uh, symptoms. They could be cracked, melted, or scuffed. Cracked pistons are usually caused by a few different things. Bad castings in the pistons. For instance, 6.4 liter power stroke pistons are known to crack from bad castings from the factory. Cracks can also be caused by thermal fatigue, which is typically caused by not allowing the engine to warm up or cool down properly. Melted pistons are a different story. They're usually caused by improper fueling or bad injectors. High performance tuners have been known to contribute to melted pistons in today's diesel, light duty diesel pickup trucks. Lastly, scuffed pistons can be caused by improper cool down or warm up. This is usually, the scuffing usually happens on the skirts and ring landings. There are a few different ways to diagnose a bad piston. Typically, you have to remove the head to visually inspect the pistons. If you have an engine that has fairly large injector boards in it or fairly large glow plugs, you might be able to sneak a very small inspection camera inside the cylinder to see the top of the piston. You could do this on, say, a N14 Cummins that has fairly large injectors. Lastly, you could diagnose the, the bad piston by re removing a glow plug and scoping the cylinder with a pressure transducer to determine the combustion process inside the cylinder. You might not be able to tell the exact condition of the piston, but it will lead you in the right direction as to where it's, if it's a piston, an injector, or a valve train problem.